after getting in all that trouble, um, I tried to get my buddy to join with me. He wouldn't, he didn't want to, I guess at the time. So I left by myself and I went and I did the whole thing by myself. Uh, everything, you know, you're making friends along the way, but you hit these certain points where I'm going here, you're going here. It's nice knowing you, man. And so every single thing, it's just been like, you know, you, you got to do this by yourself. You're leading your own adventure. And uh, from the traveling around the world to the contracting, it's always just been like, hey, what do you want to do next? You know, what's, what's your next big thing? Like, you can't wait on your friends to join. You can't wait on the time to be right. It's, it's this is your shot. This is your adventure. Yeah. Go. You know, go take it. All right, guys, this episode is sponsored by Orthos Footwear. Look, if you're tired of the same old shoe and soles that are too rigid or don't provide enough arch support, you've got to go check out Orthos Footwear. That's at orthos.com, O-R-T-H-O-S.com. Orthos insoles feature a premium tri-level design that provides your feet the ultimate support and energy return while aligning your feet to your body. It all starts with a solid foundation, Orthos Footwear. Uh, TJ, you're a husband, you're a dad, you're a veteran, you're the founder and owner of Wooby Hood Hoodie. Got that wrong there and more. Thank you so much for your service, man. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it, dude. Thank you. I really appreciate it, too. I I'd love to go back with my guests. Like, where did you grow up? What was childhood like for you? So I grew up in a couple of small towns in Kansas. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was really young. Uh, we moved around quite a bit. Uh, you know, my mom, she pretty much raised me. So having her as the, uh, the parent figure in the house, by the time I hit, you know, my teenage years, I was kind of running wild. I was getting in trouble, uh, definitely hanging out with the wrong crowd. So from there, let's see, it was right before my senior year of high school, we got in some trouble, me and some friends with our uh, high school prank. Okay. So yeah, ended up on juvenile diversion. Oh no. Uh, my whole scene. Yeah. My whole senior year, I was pretty much stuck. Uh, I was working, going home every day after school, not hanging out at all. So from there, I graduated high school, just trying to keep my notes clean. And the day everything got paid off and I was off juvenile diversion, my diversion officer called me and she's like, hey, you're good. Like you did it. Okay. So I packed up everything at work. I drove straight to the recruiter's office. I was like, hey, man, I'm ready to join. Like right now, get me out of here. So yeah, ended up enlisting. I left about six months later for basic training. And now yeah, here we are. Dude, that's crazy. I mean, when you made the decision to go into the military and you said you just drove straight to the recruiter's office there, you know, what was the motivation to sign up for those to, for the military? And then what was the transition like for you coming back to civilian life? So for me, I always knew I wanted to do it. Uh, I had a bunch of people in my family. They had all joined uh, like grandparents and uncles and all that. So nice. um, it was just, it was just something that was, I always knew it was always in me. I knew I wanted to do it. Uh, yeah. I wanted to be a ranger. So that was my only goal was to become a ranger. And I succeeded in that. Uh, then once I got out, that was a, that was an interesting period. Looking back now, I didn't quite realize how, uh, how tough it was getting out yeah. because you go from, you know, you're around your friends all the time. You're doing all this great stuff. And man, it's like that the next day you're living in a camper in Enumclaw, Washington, and <laughs> trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. I used to live out in Covington, yeah. man, so I'm familiar with you. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, not too far away. That's awesome. Oh, man, that's crazy. Like, I've had a lot of veterans on my show, and they've talked about that transition back has been kind mm -hmm. of the biggest struggle for them, um, going for the routines and going from, you know, having those mm -hmm. kind of set assigned days to just kind of going, all right, now what, man? You know? It was definitely tricky getting out. And like I said, looking back, I didn't, I didn't quite realize, uh, you know, it was mostly just going with what I knew, which was I fell back into partying and drinking. And, yeah. you know, it, it took a while to clean that up. And eventually a couple things clicked and I packed everything up. I started traveling around like all over the world. Uh, yeah. Packed a little backpack and I would just start catching flights to different countries. And wow. yeah, and that definitely changed a lot. Changed my perspective on life. Sure, man. That's so cool, dude, that you got to travel around though. And, and, and obviously uh, just to see so many different things and cultures, man, what a cool experience that would have been. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It was, uh, 
it was awesome. And, you know, kind of tying into Whoopi hoodie, that's exactly how, how we got into it. Okay. It's, uh, this, you have this, uh, poncho liner is what it is. And mm -hmm. it's called the Whoopi. You get issued in basic training and they say, take it with you everywhere. It's like your little blanket, your Whoopi. Yeah. You don't leave home without it. And so, uh, as I started traveling around and everything, and I was contracting at the time too overseas, it was always the very first thing, like from the time I was in the army till contracting to traveling, like shove the Whoopi in the bottom of your rucksack and the bottom of your backpack. All right. Now you can pack everything else, but that thing is always there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, being in business, it's, there's so many ups and downs as an entrepreneur, man. And when you're starting a business, there's, you know, failures and things like that. What's been the biggest lesson that you've learned through this process? Oh man. Uh, that's a really good question. <laughs> uh, so with this business, it's me and my wife. Okay. And you know, it's hard going into business with friends. I've had other businesses that have failed. Uh, you know, some people have stopped talking. I think I'm still friends with most of them, but I think the hardest part is, you know, her and I were married, we're business partners, we're parents together, and she does an outstanding job. Like she has been killing it. Uh, she's customer service, she's quality control, she's answering emails and all this. And I'm still trying to boss and like, hey, we got to do it like this. Yeah, 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 I'm on it, you know? And so that's been a huge learning curve is, you know, starting a business, not just by myself, but with my wife, with my family, you know, we're all involved in this and it's been great. It's been some ups and downs, but it's been great. I love it, man. It, yeah, I kind of am, I would say, the, the face of my podcast and the face of Top Rated May when I launched the company in 2012. But really, it was my, my wife who came up with the logo. My wife came up with the name. Like, yeah. when we first launched, it was, she's kind of working behind the scenes, man. So she does a lot of that work. And so it is, it's yeah, tough though. We're married and you see each other and, you're, and I have a different business perspective than she does, man. And then you try mm -hmm. to that stuff, man. It gets crazy. <laughs> yeah, trying to see eye to eye on different things. And yeah. yeah. Hey guys, this episode is sponsored by Tranquil Turtle Massage. Tracy over there, the founder, she's a small town girl from Montana, loves God, loves her family, loves her friends, loves working out, fishing, and camping. She has a passion for helping those in need and enjoys being creative with woodworking, crocheting, healthy baking, pottery, and cooking. Look, she began her massage journey back in 2010 where she graduated from massage school up in Anchorage, Alaska. She specializes in her signature massages, the Hanu Infusion and the Hanu Ashiatsu, as as well as the gua sha and manual lymphatic drainage. If you're looking for a massage specialist and someone who could get you feeling good, go see Tracy down at Tranquil Turtle Massage. And while you're there, check out CDA Microblading, offering Coeur d'Alene's best tattoo brows, plasma fibroblast, tightening, and PMU services right there in the heart of downtown Coeur d'Alene. Make sure you book your appointment at pnwmobilemassage.com. Now, on your website, I noticed you have this quote at the top of the page that says, lead your adventure. What does that mean for you, man? So that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much my story. Mm -hmm. So after getting in all that trouble, um, I tried to get my buddy to join with me. He wouldn't, he didn't want to, I guess at the time. So I left by myself and I went and I did the whole thing by myself. Uh, everything, you know, you're making friends along the way, but you hit these certain points where I'm going here, you're going here. It's nice knowing you, man. And so every single thing, it's just been like, you know, you, you got to do this by yourself. You're leading your own adventure. And uh, from the traveling around the world to the contracting, it's always just been like, hey, what do you want to do next? You know, what's, what's your next big thing? Like, you can't wait on your friends to join. You can't wait on the time to be right. It's, it's this is your shot. This is your adventure. Yeah. Go, you know, go take it. Man, I love that, dude. It's so good, dude. I mean, kind of along the same lines, what is your definition of success? Uh. You know, I've been thinking about that one a lot lately. Uh, my definition of success is, I mean, I have financial goals. I have fitness goals. I have spiritual goals, uh, relationship goals. And I keep all these things written down and I'm constantly striving to hit them, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. And ultimately, my goal is to have the ability to spend the time with my family and not have to worry about, you know, what are we going to do for work? When's dad coming home? Uh, uh, you know, how are we going to pay our mortgage? Anything like that. And so we've just been using Wooby Hoodie as a vehicle to open up all these doorways so we can go, you know, spend time camping, fishing, taking the boys out, taking them up the mountain, you know, 
we're trying to do as much as we can with them and give them a taste of this life that I grew up with in Kansas and show them everything that there is and not just, you know, hey, here's a new shirt, here's a new sweater, here's the, the newest shoes, you know, like actually give experiences to my kids and my family. Oh, it's so good, man. I, I love the experience side of things, man. And, yeah. you know, uh, you know, it, I think kids, they'll, you give them gifts, they'll fade away, man. You know, I was talking to a guy the other day and he's like, asked his son who's 21 and say, Hey, what did I give you for your 16th birthday? And he's like, well, I don't know. And he goes, but well, what did we do for your 17th birthday? And he could tell the, the exact experience that they went on together. They went hiking up in the mountains, man. And he remembered that. So it's all about yep. experience. I love that, man. You know, for me, I'm big on morning routines. I'm up at 4 a.m. six days a week. And, and really just that allows me to get right in, you know, for me, I, I spend time in prayer and just being grateful for things, man. And looking at my goals, my vision board. What's that morning routine like for you? So uh, I wake up, I'm up around 536 every single morning. Uh, my goal is to stack wins yes. right out of bed, start stacking wins. Alarm goes off, get up, there's one, you know, tally it. Uh, I change clothes, take my workout stuff out. I work out right in the living room for 15 minutes just to get the blood flowing, coffee's going. Uh, as soon as I'm done with that, I'll get my coffee and I come in here and I just start journaling. I start writing all my thoughts down, the good stuff, the bad stuff, uh, funny stuff that the boys do that I want to remember five years from now. That it was just like a little moment. I'll jot that down. Uh, the wins I'm working on, even like even writing the losses down. So I'm not carrying them with me throughout the day and, you know, still just focusing on something bad. I can just dump it and keep moving forward. Uh, after that, I'll sit down and I read for a solid 30 minutes. Uh, pretty much all financial books right now. I got my library right over here and the stack just keeps getting bigger and bigger of books. I got to read and yeah. powering through them and finish one. And the next day, pick up the next one and keep going. And after that, it's straight to the gym. You know, the boys are up, they're ready and we go hit the gym and start working out. Come on. That's awesome, yep. man. I love that dude. Stacking wins. It's so big, man. And not of people like realize that they just if they acknowledge those wins early on for me it's a goal to open my eyes man if i open my eyes that's win number one right like yeah, when i jump yeah. out of bed and make the bed there's two wins in 15 seconds yeah. man i've already accomplished a couple things man stacking the wins so important there uh, what are you most excited about for 2022 man so 2022 we got some big things going on we got a lot of new products coming out uh i'm i'm very aware that i do not know what i'm doing with this so as I keep working, I keep learning, I keep finding coaches. Uh, I just joined a new coaching group this morning. I'm super excited about, we haven't had any meetings yet. Uh, actually, one of my good friends now I met when I was traveling down in Belize and this guy is, I mean, he's been incredible. He's been coaching me through real estate, Whoopi hoodie, marketing, like just showing me all this stuff. So just 2022, we have so much stuff going on. I got all these great leaders in front of me that are coaching me and showing me stuff. I'm just looking forward to growing this business and uh, becoming successful, you know, having that time, spending it with the family. Yeah. It's, I mean, we constantly need to be leveling up as entrepreneurs. Right. And, and always, oh, yeah. like, and when I spoke with Ed Milet, the one thing that he said to me that just stuck out the most, it's right here, my wall behind me. And he says, Ackerman, it's an acronym canny and it's constant and never ending improvement. And man, when mm -hmm. I walk in my office, I see that every morning. I'm like, dude, okay, what, what thing can I learn new today, man? And who can I surround myself? Right. That can lift us up and get Absolutely. us in the right spot. So good, dude. Um, always an interesting question to ask, but when do you feel like you're at your best? Um, I'm at my best in the morning. Mm. So I went from a total night owl, you know, hanging out, partying. I quit drinking. Uh, I think he commented on that post when I was talking about that. And yeah, uh, yeah, I was a total night owl and kind of had another epiphany that, you know, when I would wake up and I wasn't hung over, I was just getting so much stuff done. And when I was hung over, you know, I'm laying around at nine, turning on the TV, watching Netflix. And so I decided, I was like, I'm done with that. It's slowing me down. These are my goals. I got to get rid of that. And now my mornings are like, they're, they're everything. Mm. Wake up, have that good morning, that good morning routine. I get so much stuff done with emails and all that. But, you know, by the time we step out and go to the gym, my day's half over. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I'm the same way, man. Mornings for me, uh, that's when I'm top of my game. I get my cup of coffee rolling, but I'm, I'm like, 
I'm definitely not the party animal anymore, man. Right. Nine, nine yeah, 30. I'm yeah. like, peace out, yep. dude. <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> I gotta get to bed. It's getting late. <laughs> totally. <laughs> My wife, she's yep. a night owl, right? So she'll stay up to like 10 30 and she's like, Hey, watch movie. Yeah, sure. And then five minutes later, I'm snoozing, man. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yep. I use them to fall asleep now. <laughs> right. Totally, man. Uh, I wanted to finish the show off with a few fun questions here. Uh, what's your favorite yeah. gun to shoot, man? Gun? Uh, man, Glocks. Okay. I shoot Glocks all the time. Uh, I've been carrying one for so long that, yeah, it's, it's just a blast. I just recently got a 300 blackout. That's been pretty fun. Oh, nice. Uh, the M4. The trusty M4, the go-to. Yeah. Okay. Sweet, yeah. man. Do you have a favorite band or favorite type of music you like to listen to? Yeah. So growing up in Kansas, there was uh, a lot of country music for me. And okay. Not so much the mainstream country music, but some smaller bands that outlaw red dirt country, like uh, Jackson Taylor, Hellbound Glory, uh, Jason Bowen and the Stragglers. Like, I don't know what it is that the music's really good and always puts me in a good mood every time I listen to it. And yeah, nice it's been great stuff. Oh, that's awesome. The last question is I'm a big coffee guy. Uh, you said you hit that coffee. How do you drink your coffee, man? Black. Black. Yes. Yep. All the way. That's, an extra. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Dude, TJ, it's such an honor to have you on my show, man. You absolutely killed it, dude. I love your story, man. And I love what you got going on with your business, man. I'm just praying blessings over you and your family and your business for 2022, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to take a listen or a watch. It's truly an honor to be able to speak with such amazing guests, and I hope that they've made an impact on your life in some way, shape, or form. And you can do me one big favor. That would be huge. Click that subscribe button, and then second favor, hit that share button. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate you. Keep changing the world. I believe in you.